Hey all and welcome back for another Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a mock castle located off of Camp Road on the ridge of the Otago Peninsula out of Dunedin in New Zealand that stands as one of the country's largest residences, as its most famous castle, and as its only historic castle open to the public. Are you prepared to brave the ghosts of Larnick Castle? Historically, land the castle now sits upon was purchased by renowned entrepreneur and politician William Larnick in 1870 for use in the construction of a private residence, and ground on site would be leveled, felled, and cleared, with construction beginning in 1871. Through the building process, around 200 workmen were utilized on the main structure alone, which was formed from imported materials from around the world, alongside stone mined from a nearby basalt quarry. And the notable Godfrey family would carve many of its intricate ceilings, with the ceiling above the main foyer alone taking around six and a half years to complete. In 1874, William, alongside his wife, Eliza, would move into the prestigious home while construction was still underway. And a year later, in 1875, the couple would import glass from Venice, which they would use to enclose the verandas to better protect against cold winters. Eliza would pass on in 1880. In 1882, William would remarry to her half-sister, Mary Cockburn Elaine, and in 1887, as a birthday present to William's eldest daughter, the castle would welcome the addition of a 3,000-square-foot ballroom. Sadly, the same year, following Mary's passing, William would be left a widower once more. When the formidable abode was finally completed, it included 35 acres of grounds, 300 acres of farmlands, stables, and quarters for farm workers, with the castle itself boasting an overwhelming 43 rooms and requiring 46 servants staffed at any one time. In 1891, William would remarry once more to a Constance de Bath Brandon. Unfortunately, over the following years, land prices would begin falling. Larnick's timber company would decline rapidly, and as his finances took hit after hit, it said he would become withdrawn and would begin drinking heavily. In 1894, William was made director of the Colonial Bank of New Zealand. However, this institution would collapse the following year, pushing him all the closer to financial ruin, and tragically, in 1898, he would lock himself in a committee room at Parliament and would take his own life by way of self-inflicted gunshot wound. Preceding his untimely death, a harsh battle over his will would ensue between remaining family members and following a series of intense legal battles, the house was sold in 1906, after which it would pass through a handful of owners while serving a variety of purposes, including acting as a lunatic asylum, as a hospital for soldiers, and even for a time as a nun's retreat with the old ballroom harboring a sheep pen. Over the years, the property would fall into disrepair, until 1967, when it was purchased by Barry and Margaret Barker, who would set to work on extensive restorations, and who would even go so far as to track down original furnishings. The Barker family would open the aged residence to the public for both tours and overnight stays, and in 1990, would pass their director's chair to their son, Norcombe, who continues to live within and manage the home to this day. Larnick Castle is open 365 days a year, offering overnight accommodations, guided or self-guided touring options, and dining arrangements for its many guests. Leading up to William's suicide, and in addition to the loss of his first two wives, he would also suffer the loss of his daughter, Kate, would have his reputation tarnished over rumors of bad business dealings, and a more popular legend even tells that at one point, he would discover his own son in bed with his third wife, who was much younger than he. As it's told, the sorrow in his life caused his soul great unrest, and after death, his spirit returned to his beloved castle, where it remains to this day, keeping an ever-watchful eye over the estate. Throughout the whole of Larnick, both staff and visitors have reported doors that open and close on their own, lights that flick from on to off by themselves, and orbs and half-formed silhouettes in the backgrounds of photography and video. And on a number of occasions, pets have been noticed 
notice spontaneously reacting to unseen presences within seemingly empty rooms. The manifestation of William himself has been encountered wandering about mainly on the first floor, and the apparitions of his many wives and daughters have been spied across the premises. One room on the second floor still holds a dress surrounded by various Victorian-era women's effects that once belonged to Constance, William's third wife. Those who have entered this room have reported it noticeably cooler in temperature than other rooms across the site, with several describing feeling unwelcomed. And while some maintain these sensations are a result of Constance's energy attached to her old garment, others tell it may be the presence of Eliza, angered at the thought of another woman possessions being kept in what she feels is her space. Reported across Larnet grounds is the near constant feeling of being watched by unseen eyes, the sensations of being touched, grabbed, or pushed by invisible hands, inexplicable bouts of claustrophobia, apparitions that appear disheveled, lost, or confused, that are believed to be ghostly remnants from the castle's time as an institution, and encounters with spectral children, often heard playing up and down hallways, that have been known to roll balls from darkened areas, to select visitors. Lastly, in 1994, the castle would stage a play surrounding its family's history. While this performance was underway, just as the actor playing William was preparing to portray his suicide, a gale force wind mysteriously swept through the structure, tearing at curtains, and an actual bolt of lightning is noted as having flashed through the room, a disruption believed to be caused by the spirit of Larnick himself, angered at the tragic manner in which his life unfolded. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.